God allows us to do it um, uh, this morning because like <clears throat> the things that we have you know we talk a great deal about our relationship with God and we're going to continue to talk about that you know we continue to talk about that um, as the Lord leads because I believe that God knows that there are those who really don't even have the relationship with him nor know what it is you know and uh, and I think the real reason for that is that you know we we uh, say sometimes well you know we can't blame the pastors for that you know because it's a person's personal responsibility but yeah but to some extent pastors do shoulder some of the responsibility as to why some people are not living and walking the way that they should because if that weren't the case then why would God call pastors mm -hmm. if he didn't put them in positions you know to where he wanted them to do a certain thing and that certain thing was to do the same thing that Jesus does and that Jesus did and he still continues to do it through the Holy Spirit today you know, but while he was on the earth, you know, Jesus, you know, the Bible says he's our perfect example. And I've said this before. It doesn't matter what it is that we have going on in our lives, no matter what our lives <coughs> include, you know, if there's something that we need or know how to do, we'll find it in the word of God. You know, the thing is, is that you have to want it, first of all. You know, you have to want the answer, rather, first of all. And if you really want the answer, you want the true answer that you know that God is going to be pleased with. So what better person for it to come from other than him? Mm -hmm. If we're to seek the Lord as we have been commanded by God, you know, with all of our heart and stuff, then, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said, in him, in him we have whatever it is that we need. Right. In, 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 in Colossians chapter 2, it says we are complete in him. See, so when Jesus came, you know, Jesus wanted to set an example, as I said last week, for those who would follow after him, right. to say, this is how we're going to do it, this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're going to say. You know, what we're going to do is, as disciples, we're going to follow Jesus. As a pastor, I'm going to preach the word of God and live the word of God. See, as a pastor, I'm going to point everybody to Jesus and nobody to myself. Nobody to myself, nobody to a church, nobody to a denomination. Only point them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because once we are saved, we don't become disciples of our church. Right. We don't become disciples of our denomination. Right. We are to become disciples of Jesus. And the only way that we're going to become disciples of Jesus, we're going to have to follow him. Right. You know, simple like that. That's, I mean, that's real simple. We're going to have to follow him. And the thing that makes it easier if we would simply believe what God said is that we only follow him and we only do what he did and say what he said and live as he lived. Right. See, don't try to get outside of that. Don't try to make it more than it really is because when Jesus said it a, a certain way or God says to do something a certain way, then there's no reason for us to go looking at other avenues trying to figure out, well, maybe I need to do something else or whatever. If God didn't tell you to do it, don't do it. Right. Simple as that. If God didn't tell you to do it, then don't do it. So if Jesus is the example and the Bible says he is the truth, then you've got to settle it in your heart that that's all that I need. That's enough. I've got the truth of God. I've got the spirit of God. I've got Jesus as my Lord. Jesus as my Savior. I have the Holy Spirit, you know, that's going to lead, teach, and guide me. And how do I know all of that? Because that's what Jesus told me. Right. That's what he said. See, too often people want to get caught up out here and get entwined, you know, with the false doctrine, you know, with false preaching, with false teaching and stuff. But if a person truly follows after the example of Jesus, you're not going to have to worry about that. Sure. Because Jesus never deviated from truth. Jesus never deviated from scripture because Jesus always said what God told him to say. Right. And if we as pastors would get it in our heart and get it settled in our heart that the relationship that Jesus has with the Father, we all need to develop that same relationship with Jesus. Whether we're pastors or whether we're just people saved and not called, so, uh, uh, not called to be a pastor or to be a preacher or to be a teacher, but their lives, our lives, aside from being in ministry, you know, it is we are still in ministry. Right. See? Because you cannot 
not be in ministry when Jesus tells you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. When the Bible tells you to be a witness and a testimony. When Jesus said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. See? So when you do those things, you are ministering the gospel of Jesus to other people and stuff. So, and that's what God has called us to do. So, <clears throat> so the thing about, about being a pastor is that, you know, a pastor and even any believer must be after God's own heart. Right. See, if I'm after God's own heart, then I want those things that are of God that are in the heart of God. And I take those things and I accept those things. Look, I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. You know, and God called me to be his mouthpiece. And I like to use it that way because all I'm doing is telling you what he says. So, and I'm being his mouthpiece and stuff. And once I understand that everything that I do is of God and comes from God, so I don't have to have any fear if I'm being in obedience to God of telling you lies and leading you down a road that God didn't tell you to go down. Right. See? And see, and this is the thing about being a pastor is, you know, you have to gain people's trust. And, and, when, and, and I say that because you gain people's trust by making sure that you do all the will of God and that you only preach and teach the word of God. Amen. That's it. See, you gain people's trust that way. But unfortunately, in the church, you know what the biggest problem is in the church? They don't want the truth. Right. The church does not want the truth. Now, I was reading in, uh, I was reading in scripture this week about in Jesus. You know, and about the fact that, you know, that he was, about the fact that he was ridiculed, he was reviled, and, and the religious people literally hated him. Hated him. Remember last week we said in John chapter 8, you know, that, um, that these people, that Jesus said, you want to kill me, a man who had told you the truth? See? And the thing about it is, if you're walking with the Lord and stuff, you're not going to be liked about, by people. And, and you need to understand that. That just comes with being a child of God. You're not going to be liked by, by people. You know, and in many churches, you're not going to be liked by the people in the church. Because when you live according to the word of God, when you are being led by the spirit of God, then guess what? You're not going to be liked. You're going to be hated. Because right. what did Jesus say? If they hated me, they're going to hate you as well. And so many pastors don't want to be hated by people. They don't want to be, you know, called one of those Jesus freaks or one of those people who are over the top or one of those people who are, who is raw, as they say about me a lot. He is raw around there. Look, let me explain something about being raw, as they say. There ain't no such thing. Right. as being raw. The only reason people say you are raw or you are this or you are that, they have formed their own opinion about what you need to, uh, uh, what you need to preach and how you need to preach it. Mm -hmm. See? And that's a personal assessment. Can't, can't find it in the Bible. See? Because see, the thing is, is that when God said preach the truth, you preach the truth based on, with the, well, not based on, but with the personality that God gave you. And a lot of times people take on certain personalities depending on how serious they are about their relationship with God and how serious they take the fact that I've been called by God to preach the truth. Right. Now, a person that has made up in their mind, all I'm going to do is what God said. I'm preaching the truth. I'm going to tell you what God said, see? And the thing is that I don't have it in my mind that, well, you know, I may offend some people. Well, you know, I may hurt some people's feelings and all that. When you are truly listening to the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit of God and listening to the Holy Spirit and you allowing Him to be the one that tells you what to say, you ain't thinking about whether you hurt somebody's feelings or not right. because your mind is completely and totally, you know, on what God wants you to do and what God wants you to say. And you do those things understanding that the whole purpose in the preaching of the gospel is to cause you to, number one, know the truth. Number two, to understand the truth. Number three, to follow the truth. But more, more importantly than anything, 
that you're going to be led to do everything that Jesus has commanded that we ought to do. Right. And that your life is supposed to change in that regard. You cannot call yourself, and I cannot call myself, a child of God if I'm not being obedient to do what God told me to do. Right. And see, and pre got preachers just like that as well. They will not do what God told them to do. See, when God called us as preachers in, in, uh, in, 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 um, in Ephesians, the Bible says, you know, that he called some pastors, preachers, teachers, you know, prophets, apostles, and so on and so forth, for what? The working of the ministry. Mm -hmm. To do what? So that we can all come into one unity of faith. You ain't seeing that in the church. Because they're, yeah, they're going to talk about being in one unity of faith, but it's going to be based on the faith of whatever denomination I belong to. Right. See, it's not going to be becoming one with God. It's not going to be becoming one with Jesus. It's all going to be about us four and no more. Our little churches and all of that stuff. And, and the thing is, is that it kind of blows my mind that people, preachers, allow themselves to fall in them kind of, those kind of traps and stuff and not understanding, you know, that there are consequences when you don't obey God. Right. I mean, there are serious consequences when people do not obey God. See, and the thing about it is, the biggest part of it is deception, lies, and all of this stuff. So let's go over to uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, and then we, we're going to look at some of the things that God does to people that don't obey. Okay, so in, um, in chapter 1, in verse 5, it says, Before I formed thee, and God is talking to Jeremiah, before I called thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And what God is saying that when he, when he uh, sanctified him in verse 5, you know, he set him apart. Mm -hmm. He set him apart for what? To do God's will. Mm -hmm. God sets people aside to do his will. And believe it or not, every person that ever gets saved have been similarly set aside to do God's will. Right. When you are saved, you don't do anybody's will but God's. Right. That's the only person that you're going to serve is God, and serving God means doing his will completely. And so God says, I sanctified you, and I ordained you or appointed you uh, a, prophet. a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Now, when I was called to be a pastor, I surrendered, or when I got saved, first of all, I surrendered my will to God. I told God, you my life is your life. I don't have a life anymore outside of you. And I'm saying to God, then I want you to do it in my life as you choose, as you please, and I'm willing to follow you. See? So, when God tells me to say stuff, and people sometimes think that it may be hard or harsh or whatever and stuff, that's just too bad. Because I'm not going to be inclined in any way, shape, or form to allow anybody to intimidate me not to do what God told me to do. Right. See? And every believer needs to have that same attitude because that's the attitude that Jesus had. Right. Jesus could not allow his emotions to get caught up into the will of God and what he was doing for the Lord and stuff. Why? Because your emotions can go up, they can go down, they can go left, they can go right, or your emotions just have you stunned, period, to where you do nothing. See? But the thing about the Holy Spirit of God, he is the same way as God is. He never changes. Whatever God's personality is, that's who the Holy Spirit is. Whatever God commands us to say and tells us to do, that's who the Holy Spirit is. See, he's not deviated from anything that God tells him to say because the Holy Spirit has hurt a lot of feelings. Yeah. Why? He's a spirit of truth. Right. See, and he's a spirit, and because he's a spirit of truth, he ain't going to be lying to anybody. Right. See, he's going to tell you exactly what God wants you to know uh, about what he knows about you. Because sometimes you don't know what God knows about yourself, or at least you want to acknowledge that you know what God knows about you. 
See? Mm -hmm. Because as I said last week, you know, people that sin, they're going to hide it. They ain't going to tell nobody about it. They ain't going to tell nobody about it that ain't like them. See? They'll tell somebody doing the same stuff that they're doing <laughs> because neither one of them see anything wrong with it. But you tell somebody that's full of God. You tell somebody that's really full of the Holy Ghost. You tell somebody that really believes, you know, uh, uh, to the nth degree the word of God, you know, and see what comments you get from them. They're not going to placate your sin. Mm -hmm. They're not going to agree with your sin. They're going to tell you the truth. And you say, oh, well, you're trying to call me out. No, nobody's calling you out. See? You know, I'm telling you what I believe and who I am in Jesus Christ, and I don't think adultery is acceptable. It ain't happening, man. Right. You know, and they get a little bit ticked off about that kind of stuff. But the sad thing about it, most of those people, a lot of them, well, not most, but a lot of those people are in the church. Mm -hmm. And they're in the church doing that stuff because of these panty waist pastors mm -hmm. that are afraid to tell them the truth. Right. See? You know, like I told y'all last week, you know, if you got a friend and they know that you sinned or whatever, they don't love you if they don't tell you, you know, that you you need to you need to repent. See? They don't love you if they don't tell you that. Right. See? And see, I don't love you if I don't tell you the truth every Sunday when y'all come up in here based on the word of God. See? I would be a piss poor pastor if I did that. See? And unfortunately, we have a whole lot of piss poor pastors. Yeah. Or piss, 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 poor, 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 poor pastors. They're that bad. Because they've been intimidated by people. <coughs> they've been intimidated by, you know, members in the church that got money and that got prestige and that got power. See? And they cower to that, and so they don't, they're not honest with the people and stuff. But the people are not honest with themselves because if I knew that I'm in, in a church and, and I got something that I can do or say, you know, to expose this crap, I'm opening my big mouth. So people ain't gonna do that in church. So in verse um, verse seven, the main point I wanted to make there is you have to tell, you have to say what God told you to say. You can't just be out there scared not to and that's the thing we have we have a lot of fearful people you know in the in the, who call themselves the body of Christ but if they're scared they're really not the body of Christ verse 10 see I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant see now if you look at that in a spiritual sense you know, I'm called to preach the gospel, and through the preaching of the gospel, you know, I'm going to tear down, I'm going to root out, I'm going to pull down, and I'm going to destroy, and I'm going to throw down, you know, all of the crap that people got going on in their lives, see? But the thing about it is, my purpose, or rather my uh, command, is to expose it all by simply preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. And see, now I know what to preach if I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, see? Mm -hmm. But see, you know, another preacher can read that same thing right there, you know, and say, oh, I'm going to throw down stuff out your way. I'm going to get this out your way. I'm going to throw down and pull down and all this stuff. But he ain't going to tell you that you're the problem. You know, he won't tell you that. That's why you got to throw down and all that because you got so much mess going on in your life, you know, that, you know, that, that you need to hear what God is saying. And this is what is so sad about the whole thing. You know, people have stuff going on in their lives. And instead of running to God, Amen. they sprint away from God, mm -hmm. see? Because they don't want to admit that I'm in sin. Right. They don't want to admit that I need to repent. I need God's help. And look, there ain't no other place you're going to get the kind of help that you need. You know, yeah, you can go find and get the kind of help you want, but the help that you need is only going to come from God, right. see? You cannot be delivered from your sin or from your circumstances unless Jesus Christ cleanses you from that and that begins with you recognizing that you are in sin and I need to repent of this stuff. Right. See? That's the only time that's going to happen. See, you can go to your best friend, you can go to another preacher, and if a preacher don't tell you that, you, that you're in sin, he wasn't called by God when you know you're in sin. Mm -hmm. See? Because what you came to do, you came to get some relief. You didn't want to get deliverance. You wanted relief. You wanted somebody that was going to tell you that your sin ain't that bad, placate your sin, smooth it over to the point to where you literally bury the conviction that you had. That's right. See? That's right. Because the thing about it is when you get called out by God, you're going to get convicted. No, no question. You're going to get convicted. And you get convicted because God wants you to get it right. 
right. and stuff. But if you got men standing up there lying with you, and the sad thing about it is the reason that they can't help you get rid of your sin, because they got a whole bunch of sin of their own. Right. How in the world can you tell somebody the son will set you free when you had not even sought him to deliver you from your sin? And you're standing up there talking about, well, you know, I'm the pastor and all this stuff. Yeah, but you ain't got no special privileges. Right. You're no different than any other sinner when you sin against God. Sure. Your pastoral title don't mean crap sure. to anybody, especially to God. Sure. Because Jesus said, preach the gospel. He didn't tell you to preach a doggone denominational tradition. He told you to preach the truth. So, so God is talking to Jeremiah. And go over to verse 16. He says, and I will utter my judgment against them, touching all their wickedness. See, there ain't nothing that you can hide from God. <clears throat> He's got a word in this Bible led by the Holy Spirit to find all your sin out. Because didn't he say your sin going to find you out? Yeah. Didn't he say it's going to be shouted from the rooftop? Yeah. So the longer you, hi you hide your sin, the bigger the mouth going to be on the rooftop shouting it out. That's right. See? Because you think you hide something and you think you're getting away with something. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you're not getting away with anything. The only thing you're doing is you're fooling yourself. You got a cloak for your sin because you will not let the truth pull it off. Mm -hmm. Remember when Jesus came and he, was he said that, you know, if he had not preached the truth, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, if I had not preached the truth, he said, then you would have still had a cloak for your sin. You can still cover up your sin. He said, but no, no, no. You can't cover up your sin now. He said, because I've exposed your sin by the preaching of the truth. That's right. what he said. See, So by him preaching the truth, he's exposing the sin. So you can't hide that sin no more. See, you can't hide it anymore. And you and you sitting there thinking, oh, I got away with who I got away. You ain't got away with nothing. Understand, understand something. God is all knowing all sin. Right. God is a spirit. See? He knows everything. You know, I mean, how stupid can somebody be? If, 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 if God created me, made me, he knows everything about me. Right. Why? Because he was the one who put me together. Right. See? And we're sitting around here thinking like, oh, he don't know what I'm doing. He, God knows everything. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. A man who is full of God, who is a pastor, who is a who is a, a full of the Holy Spirit of God, who has totally surrendered to the will of God, to do God's will, to do God, and to serve God's purposes and stuff. Guess who else knows? He knows. That's right. Because God gonna show it's a spiritual thing. And this is the thing that people miss about preachers. You know, the ones that are truly committed to God, they are being led by the Spirit of God. When they preach a gospel or preach a word, it is coming from God. They are not his words. See? Right. I take ownership of them because I know they're from God. Because I trust them that they came from God, and I trust that what I say, the anointing of God is going to be on it. Why? Because it came from him. Amen. See? Preachers cannot be honest and truthful with anybody if they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. See? When Jesus said what? I see, I, 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 I say what I hear my father say. So what is Jesus speaking? He is speaking the words of God which make those words spiritual. Right. Why? Because God is a spirit. See? So he's speaking spiritual words or speaking God's word. And any word that is spiritual, it is God's word. That's right. You know, and I'm not talking about all these old crazy crap out here, these, the, 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 the darkness that, that, that twists the spiritual words. Or, or twist the gospel rather. I'm talking about the truth. The words of truth. God's words. They are spirit and their life. That's what the Bible says. See. So the thing is. Is that. If you're sitting under a pastor. That has not committed himself. And not. I'm not and I'm not talking about herself. Because there ain't no such thing as a female pastor. I just want to throw that in right there. Because there ain't no Bible for it. We got all these feminist people running around here talking about women can do this and women can do past. No, no, no. You're not God. You don't get to say who can do what. 
God has already commanded it and described it and instructed it in his word. And anything that is not instructed in his word that's said outside of his word is a lie. Right. It's not the truth. Right. It's not the truth, see. Thy word is truth, John 17, 17. See, there ain't but one truth, and it's the word of God. Amen. There ain't but one Lord, his name is Jesus. Amen. There ain't but one Savior, that same Jesus, that's Lord, is Savior as well. The thing about it is there's only one God and Father of all, and it's Jehovah God, nobody else. Right. See, So the thing is, is that we need to understand that you need to be committed to the word of God. You need to be committed to the spirit of God. You need to be committed to Jesus Christ. God the Father, and you trust the Holy Spirit to do what God sent him to do in your life. Amen. See, you can't live your life as a, as a believer without being led by the Holy Spirit. And you can use it to where the people are being led by the Holy Spirit. Just walk, or just, uh, uh, walk, uh, uh, walk around and, found, uh, and follow them for about a week and see how kind of stupid stuff they do. Mm -hmm. The ones that are not right with God. Mm -hmm. See? See, this is our life. Jesus Christ is our life. Living God's word is our life. Being like Jesus, becoming like him more and more every day is our life. Mm -hmm. See, our life is hid in Christ. He lives in us and he lives his life through us. Right. But it's only going to be, a, but that only happens if we allow him to do so. Okay, so verse 17 says, verse 16, And I will utter my judgment against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. Verse 17, Thou therefore gird up thy, thy loins and arise and speak unto them all, all, all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. See? So when you start telling the truth and people start seeing, start getting exposed, their face start wrinkling up and going all which way and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then, and then you look at them and you know, maybe I need to cast the devil out of something. See, because you know when you're a sinner and the light is shone on your sin, you get real uncomfortable. Yeah. You know. The thing is, can't nobody see inside of you, but your doggone stomach and everything about you, that just doggone at war with everything. At war with trying to hide your feelings and, and stuff like that because you've been exposed. See, you can't hide that. Yeah. You can try. But God says it's coming out. It is eventually coming out, see? And the thing is, is that you should be willing to let God, you know, expose anything in your life that ain't right. And a lot of people don't have that stuff exposed. It's simply because the truth of God is not being preached where they're attending church at. See? And think about it. You know, if you put something in the freezer and you just leave it there, it gets <laughs> harder the next day. Leave it in there again. It gets harder after that. It gets harder and harder and harder and harder. That's the same thing with your heart every time you reject the truth. Mm -hmm. Every time you reject the truth, your heart becomes hard. Remember in, Pharaoh, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt, I mean in Genesis, when Pharaoh kept rejecting God's command, God said, hey, let my people go. He said, you're a clown, man. I ain't letting them dudes go. And so his heart got harder. And the Bible said that. Mm -hmm. His heart got harder and harder and harder every time he rejected the truth of God. See? Or the command of God, rather. So whenever people reject the truth, now the thing about it is, what ha what has happened in the king, in, not in the kingdom, but in churches, and, and and whenever I reference kingdom, I'm talking about truly born again people, the body of Christ, the body of people who truly serve the Lord. When I say kingdom, that's who I'm referencing. I am not referencing when I say the church. I'm talking about these clowns in these buildings that are not telling people the truth. But you know, when you've got a pastor sitting up, sitting in front of you and he is deceived, continuing to be deceived, and if he is in deception, he is what? Being deceived and deceiving. Right. Paul put it a little bit backwards. Paul says deceiving and being deceived. 
But what they're doing is they're deceived. Because if they're not telling you what God says, because pastors were called to do the same thing Jesus did, and that was to what? Preach the truth. Right. He was, we were called to do the same thing the apostles did. What? Be a, be a, a, a disciples of Jesus and preach the truth. Right. See? That's what we were called to do. And if a preacher's not doing that, and this it, it amazes me, the thing that you tell the truth about what God says about false Christ and false prophets and false preachers and stuff, and people look at you like you're stupid. Like, and they get mad. Oh, he just want to talk about the preacher. No, it ain't about talking about the preacher clown. You just don't want to uh, 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 admit that you just got exposed. Right. The word that was preached just called you out. See? Right. And it doesn't matter if anybody else knows that you got called out other than God. See, because that's the person that you have to repent to. That's the person that you have to change to become like him. See, mm -hmm. so it don't matter what anybody else thinks. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They concern themselves so much more about what somebody else thinks. And they don't give a rip about what God thinks. Jesus said, you need to be scared of God because the fact is he is God. He has the power to save and he has the power to cast you into hell. Right. See? Only God has that power right. and that authority and right. stuff, see? So nobody, I can't pass judgment on anybody, but I can judge according to righteous judgment. Right. Because Jesus said, you're going to know them by the way they live. You're going to know them by their fruit and stuff. So, so however you live in your life, that's a testimony to who you belong to. And you don't belong but to one or two people. You either belong to God or you belong to the devil. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And I know when people, when I say that you belong to the devil, ooh, I can just see them cringing. That guy crazy. He done lost it. Read John chapter 8. Read verse 44 about what Jesus says about the people who are truly serving the devil. The Bible says if you're not serving Jesus and you can say that you're saved, you can say that you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can say that you live your life. But guess what? Ain't nobody saying that but you. See? God isn't saying that about you. Right. See, because God knows you can fake it on the outside but he knows what's going on on the inside. That's right. See, that's right. and that's the key. And that's the difference. He knows what's going on. And, and see, people don't see God as being a spirit. They don't see God as being omnipotent, knowing everything, seeing everything, know everything that go on and stuff. Look, I mean, that just tells you, you know, how fickle and feeble your mind is to think about the, the very person that created the universe and created your fat-headed self, too, that you don't think that he knows everything. Mm. How do you think? See, because I can tell you something. I guarantee you that a pastor that is tell, that tells people the truth, when people hear him, I don't care if it's by live, live stream or when people sitting right in front of you or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter or whatever. I guarantee you that if when the truth is being preached, and you're following the leading of the Holy <laughs> Spirit. People who are listening, they're getting hit upside the head, left and right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people don't have an attitude of holiness. Right. They don't have an attitude of being righteous before God and walking in newness of life. They don't, they don't have that attitude because that attitude is not being instilled in people from one week to the next week, you know, by, by, by preaching the gospel in all of these churches, because that's not what's, what's happening. Right. The gospel is really not being preached. And we're going to look at that in a minute. So God says, don't worry about the faces and stuff. He said, because and, and in one place, he said, well, you can go ahead and preach to them. He said, they ain't going to believe nothing you say. When you tell people in the church the truth, they don't believe you. They don't want to hear nothing that you got to say. They tune you out. I can remember one time I was looking at a, can't remember, it was a message I was preaching live stream. You know, and you can like see the number of people that tune in or whatever. And I started preaching on a certain thing. I can't, I may have been homosexual or something. Man, you just saw we going, okay, you started out with five, then you got four, then you got three, then you got two. As long as you stayed on that subject, you were losing people watching. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, is that, why is it that people, you know, the very people who call themselves children of God are the very ones that don't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Amazing, ain't it? I mean, really. They're the very ones who do not want to hear the truth. 
And what it tells you is that people have been so indoctrinated with false doctrine, with denominational doctrine, with traditions and doctrines of men, and they've become comfortable with that stuff. Right. They have learned to rely on the way their flesh feel, feels, rather, as opposed to being led by the Spirit of God. Right. Because there's a difference, you know, you can have, you can have a bad feeling, Tina can have a bad feeling. You know, your bad feeling is really conviction because you, the spirit that got you. Right. Her bad feeling is, is, is not conviction. You know, it's guilt. See, because her flesh, mm -hmm. her, she relies on her flesh mm -hmm. and her flesh dictates how you're going to feel. Mm -hmm. See, whereas if we're walking in the spirit, the spirit is going to dictate how we feel. But when we get convicted, the first thing out the mouth of the Holy Spirit is repent. Right. See? But if you're not convicted, you're going to sit there with that guilt on you. And then, you know, the more you think about that guilt, the more all those other emotions are going to become right. involved, you know, in, in, in how you feel. Right. Because you're going to think about it. See, what you think will eventually manifest some kind of an emotion or some kind of reaction about what you heard or what you saw. Right. See, it's going to do that. But when you're convicted... And see, a person that's convicted, they're going to know, you know, that it's from God because it's the word that I heard. Because you go back and think about it. He said, thou shalt not lie. Oh, that's scripture. I need to repent, man. See? And so you repent. That's the first thing that comes to a believer's mind is I need to repent. But the one thing that comes to a person's mind who are, who's walking in the flesh is it ain't going to repent because they can't hear the voice of God. Right. They're not listening for it because they don't know to listen for it. They have made, they maybe have been told, but until you accept that, you know, and say, I, I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, right. whether it's good or bad. Because, see, the Bible tells us that the, that the Word of God is good for conviction, for chastisement, for correction, and those kinds of things, so, and reproof. So why, don't, why, why, why is it people don't believe God when he says that? If the Bible says when God does something, even when he chastises us, you know, God is a good God and Father. Right. Everything that God does is for our good. He recognizes when we are ignoring things in our lives that can be detrimental to our walk and our relationship with him. So what's he going to do as a father? He's going to correct you. He's going to put this stuff out, and God has to even, 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 and, and, and I'm not going to even say a lot. He has to put you through some tests sometimes in order for you to get what God is trying to get to you. See? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because in most cases, if God doesn't do it, nobody else is going to do it. See? Who's going to walk around chastising themselves? <laughs> Child, you know, I gave myself a good whooping this morning. <laughs> <coughs> I gave myself a good whooping this morning. That ain't did nothing but gave you a few scars if you actually did that. Mm -hmm. And allowed you to see how big of a fool you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people try to do. They try to do things and stuff, you know, to ease their conscience or to bring about a false peace. Mm -hmm. And what they do is when people are guilty of their sin, many of them, they, you know, they all say we have like misery loves company. Mm -hmm. You're going to seek out and search out somebody that's going to be just like you. That's right. Because she, you don't want to go see God nobody like Mary because, you know, she's going to tell you the bare truth about yourself, you know, without a smile and stuff. But see, you don't want to hear that. You, you Look, you can't be telling somebody, you know, something serious that they're doing in their life and then smile about it. They ain't going to take that serious. Mm -mm. But see, the thing about it is the when, when a person won't seek out somebody that's... Uh, you know, that don't tell them the whole truth about their sin or whatever. You know why they won't go to that person? Because, see, they know how that person lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ain't going to him. He, see? Because, see, most, ain't nobody coming to me. They ain't, ain't going to come to me. But, hey, bro, I mean, look, you know, I'm doing this, but, you know, mm -mm, that ain't going to happen. They're, they're not going to happen because he, they know that I believe in telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And I am definitely straightforward about the truth. I'm not lying to nobody about nothing, as right. I told y'all last week. I'm not lying to anybody. If Jesus didn't tell a lie, I ain't telling one. 
See? Living as he lived is what the Bible said. So if Jesus don't lie, I'm not telling lies. And when people become comfortable in telling a lie, oh man, they're in trouble. See? Because when you tell a lie, and I, made, I talked about this a little bit, I think it was last week or the week before. When you start telling lies, what do you think you become? A liar. A liar. Mm -hmm. And if you become a liar and you die a liar, where do you think you're going? To hell. To hell. Mm -hmm. And what it tells you is that how much God hates liars. Man, there are going to be so many preachers in hell and they're going to be funny. That's right. Because it did. See, what preachers don't understand as well, I think, is they don't realize how much God loves his people. And if God, if you say God called you to represent him, then God has commanded you to what? Tell the truth. Preach the gospel is what he said. Be led of the spirit of God. See, if you're led of the spirit of God, you're not going to let, you're not going to lie to anybody. You're going to be telling them the gospel. Right. Holy Spirit ain't going to tell you to tell them anything else. He ain't going to tell you to tell, oh, let's preach, uh, preach the second paragraph on page two of everything. He ain't going to be telling you that. Holy Spirit is going to be dealing strictly with the Spirit. See? Spiritual things, because only by the Spirit of God can you be delivered. Can you be healed? Can you be set free from whatever, whatever it is that you're dealing with? See? The Spirit of God is the only thing that can do that. You know, and I've said before, and I know some folks got to get offended, but, you know, folks try to find, try to find answers in psychiatrists, psychologists, you know, uh, you know, motivational speakers and all of this stuff. You know, them guys like Osteen, them kind of guys and stuff. Those guys ain't going to help you, you know, when the devil doggone, the bitter doggone plug out one side your butt and he got his teeth in the other one already. See? Right. Ain't, that stuff ain't going to help you. Being a good person ain't going to help you right. with none of that. You're going to have to know what you need to say and what you need to do. You're going to have to know that you have to command the devil to get out of your face in the name of Jesus, and you got to believe what you say. That's right. Because if you believe it, God said it'll happen. See? Jesus said, when you pray, believe. Regardless of what you're praying for, if it's God's will, believe it when you pray. See? That's what you have to do. But those prayers and that believing ain't going to happen if you're not in right relationship with God. Yeah. You cannot just pray in any kind of condition of your life. And when I say condition, I'm talking about if you've got sin in your life, that's going to mess up that prayer, man. Because God ain't going to be hearing you. Remember the blind man in John chapter 9? He said, God don't hear sinners. <laughs> blind man said that just got healed mm -hmm. on fire for Jesus already. See? Because he went around town making Pharisees mad. They say, he said, you want to follow him? You want to believe in him too? <laughs> you know, because see, they thought, can't nobody talk to us like that. And it's sad to say you got a lot of pastors and preachers and churches that feel that same way. You can't talk to me that I'm the pastor. See, chapter and verse that you have special privileges from God. Where's the chapter and verse for that, Mary Jackson? I don't see anybody. You know, that's the thing, see, people have made monsters out of a lot of these pastors. People have made monsters out of people like Joyce Meyer and those kind of folks. Monsters. Why? Because they grovel at their feet. They put them on pedestals. They make them more important than God. It's what they do. And the thing is, is that they're going to get called out and those people who are worshiping at their feet are going to get called out as well. That's right. See? And people, they don't like it when you call out people's names and stuff like that, but Jesus didn't have no problem with that. Pharisees, you lying, dirty dogs, you blind guys, you open sepulchers, you whitewashed tombs, you idiots, you children of the devil. Jesus didn't have no problem telling people about See, this is what we have to understand. Okay, you're running around town. I mean, for the last six months, you've been running around town acting a fool. Acting like a total idiot. 
I mean, just stupid and stuff. But yet you don't want nobody to call you an idiot or stupid or whatever it is that you're manifesting in your life. Oh, he's a man of God. What? A man of God? Yeah, he's a man of God with a little G is what he is. See? But they want, they would much rather you lie to them and tell them stuff that, remember in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 30, in verse 10, I think, when they, when, they, when they told the prophets, they say, you know, speak to us what? Smooth things. Deceiving things. Tell us lies. We don't, and they're basically what they said, we don't want to hear the truth. Churches are full of them kind of people. I mean full of them busting open at the seam. See, the thing that people equate spirituality with is how big the church is, how many people are in the church, how popular your pastor is and all that, how many PhDs and XYZs they got and all this stuff. I never did understand, could understand why people said, you know, this guy was a pastor and they call him Dr. So-and-so. -so. What? <laughs> Jesus had more degrees than any of them and it didn't have nothing to do with earthly degrees. Mm -hmm. It was all spiritual. Right. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Jesus walked in the Spirit. Jesus preached the gospel. Jesus preached the truth. Not my words, but my Father's words. Right. Not my words, but the words of Jesus. That's what I'm preaching. Right. See? And that's it. But nobody, most, most folk don't want to hear that. That's right. Don't you come telling me the truth. And you know why? Because these preachers done deceived them. These preachers have lied to them and formed a, a, a certain kind of behavior in them that does not seek first the kingdom of God. It's what they've done. So in verse 19 in, 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 in Jeremiah says, And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. See, we got a lot of preachers don't believe what God just said. You tell them what I say, they ain't going to want to hear you, but you tell them what I say. Mm -hmm. So they get fearful and get scared and get wimpy, you know, and, and instead of having on the armor of God, standing there representing God and representing God's kingdom, being faithful and obedient to do what God told them to do, they end up standing up there with a pink suit with all these little flowers around them. <laughs> They remind me of them, kids, them, them, them people, them flower children. They used to talk about back in the 60s. Have flowers all around their head and all of these patterned outfit on with flowers and all these crazy colors and all of this stuff. See? I'm going to tell you something. That probably going to make some people mad, but that's okay. We ain't got a whole bunch of men these days. We got guys that are walking around you know, with the persona or the physical makeup of a man, but ain't nothing got no spine. That's right. See, if you were to slice them dudes down the back, you find so much jelly in their spine, I mean, it would make you want to puke. See, right. you know, you cannot be passive as a believer. Mm -mm. And you definitely can't be passive if you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much stuff going on in the church that it must be addressed and God has called mouthpieces <laughs> to address it, but those suckers are numb. I mean, a mom. They all got doggone muzzles on. See? And that's why, you know, when they speak, ain't nobody hearing them because they ain't saying nothing. Right. You know, and when I say a muzzle, I'm not talking about a physical muscle, a muzzle, muzzle rather. That fear of the people has put, a, put their mouth on lockdown not to preach the word of God. Mm -hmm. See? Because they want to preach, they want you to preach what they want you to hear. They want you to lie to them. They want you to speak to them smooth stuff. And that's exactly what's happening in the church now. Right. See, you ain't going to hear no preacher talking about sin in the church. You ain't going to hear no preacher talking about adultery, fornication, lying, homosexuality, transgenderism, and all that, rebuking all that mess. You ain't going to hear nobody talking about that. Because if they were talking about that, it would be all over the news. And I'm talking about these famous guys that got all the notoriety, that got all the big audiences and stuff. These guys that go on NBC, ABC, and CDS. See? 
not CBS, CDS. See, Clown, Di <laughs> Clown Di Division Network is what you want to call it, see, <laughs> and all of that. Because these guys cause division. When you don't preach the truth, what you do without knowing it, you cause division in the church and stuff. Right. Because when people aren't led by the Spirit of God, they're going to make up whatever it is that they ought to be doing on the kind of people that they ought to be associating with. Right. They are not going to see other people in that church as brothers and sisters in Christ. They're not going to see it that way. Because people are, be are becoming more and more uh, centrally focused on themselves than actually doing what the Word of God says in relationship to other people. See? They ain't going to be doing that. They're not going to have any interest in the truth. So, but, and, and that's what happens when you, when, if you tell these people, see, God told him to tell them what he said. And because he's telling them what God said, they got mad. They don't want to hear what God has to say. Because God is always going to be the tell the truth because he is the truth. So he's not going to tell, God is not going to hide your little sin from you. He's going to tell you exactly what it is. And the question is, once you know, what are you going to do about it then? Are you going to obey God? Or are you going to snub your nose at God and say, I ain't repenting. You know, mm -mm, you ain't going to make me feel bad. And that's what a lot of people think is feeling bad. No, man, it's conviction. You're going to go to hell if you don't repent. That's just simply the bottom line. In uh, chapter 7, God says, and he's talking to Jeremiah again. And he's trying to get these clowns to repent of their sin and stuff. And this is what happens when people have rebelled against God, have rejected God, and have become comfortable in their sin. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. God says, trust in, don't you trust in lying words. That's why you have to know what the truth is so that you can separate truth from lies. If you don't know what truth is, you ain't going to know the difference. Because the devil can say things to you and make it sound so much like the truth. Ask Eve about that. See? Ask Judas about that. Even asked Peter about that. He tricked him too. See? And the thing is, is that God says, trust not in lying words. Right. So he said, you're going to be hearing some stuff that ain't true. He said, but don't you trust in that? He says, what again? You shall know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth will make you free. Right. See, if you know the truth, but you can't know the truth, man, if you're not doggone seeking after the truth. Because what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 7? You know, he says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. If you love God, you're going to be searching out every crook and cranny of your life to make sure that you don't have sin in your life. Right. You're going to examine the people that you hang around with to make sure that they don't fit in that category in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 of the unrighteous. See? So that's what, that's what God is saying. See, it's important that we understand the heart of God when it comes to living a life and hearing what God has to say and doing it. Right. See, it's important that we understand that. But if God is not real to you and if you're not in love with him, guess what? When I speak truth, it ain't going to matter to nobody. If I mean, if they're like that. Right. See, the only people going to hear the truth are people who truly love God. And when I say hear the truth, they're going to hear it, and then they're going to do something with it. That's right. That's See, right. that's the bottom line. He says in verse 5, But if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if we thoroughly, if, if we thoroughly, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, Neither walk after other gods to your hurt. 
Then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. People are sitting underneath these guys telling them lies every week. And what does God say? It has no profitability at all. That's right. Lying, making you feel good in your flesh does not profit you anything. Right. See, it does not cause you to draw close to God. It does not cause you to have faith. It does not cause you to look unto Jesus, the author and the finish of your faith. It causes you to have no consciousness of what is of God and what's not of God. Because you're not thinking about that. All you're thinking about is what you were told and not what was truth. See? And you accepted it. And, what, and when you accept deception, that's what you become. He says, you trust in lying words. Would you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not, and come, and listen to what he said. Okay, six days out the week, you out there worshiping your idols, worshiping your gods, you know, yeah. placating your sin, stealing, and all that. And in verse 10, he says, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Mm. You don't treat God's house any different than you treat the world. You may as well be in the world when you're in church on Sunday. That's right. You don't expect any different. You know, they, you know, you know, you're not going to live any different because lo and behold, if he just happens to say something that's true, you're going to kick that crap to the side. That's right. You know, Think about it. At some point in our lives, and it still may be uh, true today, when we were growing up especially, if that was something that was real, real bad that we were doing, or real, real bad in our life, what would we do? Ignore it. Mm -hmm. Ignore it and bury that thought about that thing. And the more you think, oh, I ain't gonna think about that. I ain't gonna think about that. And you keep burying it and burying it and burying it to where in your mind, it's non-existent, but in your heart, it's very much alive. Mm -hmm. See? Because you can't hide that from God. You can't hide it. See? And all you have done is you lie to yourself. See? And if you lie, if you lie to yourself, you lie to other people too. That's true. That's true. And it's obvious you lie to God. Because you know you got sin, but you ain't confessing it. You ain't repenting of it. So you're ignoring what God is telling you and you're trying to, re and you have rejected the counsel of the Holy Spirit and in essence you have rejected God so God's rejecting you and going to let you go on out there and do whatever it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. He's going to take his hands off of you. He said in verse <coughs> verse 11 he says, is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. In other words, you treat God's house just like you treat everything else. He says, you go out here and you commit all these sins. And then you come in the house of God and you have no conviction. You have no expectation of repenting or no desire to repent. And you think that, well, you know, God ain't no different than what I was doing six days ago of, uh, uh, of the last six days. So I'm going to just bring all my crap in the, in the house of God and I'm going to feel comfortable with it. See, that's what you're telling God. You tell the same thing every day you get up. You don't seek first his kingdom because you've already got your day planned out as to what you're going to do that day. You have no room for God whatsoever because why? Your mind is already made up. Mm -hmm. I got plans. See, you know, I remember using this example years and years and years and years and years ago. You know, there are a lot of people who have plans. They make their plans for summer plans, you know, to go on trips and vacation and all of this stuff. And what if God say, don't go on that vacation this year? <laughs> you remember that poor family that I showed you and that you became acquainted with and stuff? Why don't you take that and help them out? Huh? <laughs> I think God lost his mind for a minute.
because come hell or high water, and you know what happens when you etch your plans in stone? There is no room left for you to hear anything from God. No room. See? Because when your mind is made up, you're not listening to anything alternative to that. You're going to do that no matter what. You know, if the Bible says that we're to do all things as unto the Lord, don't you think we ought to seek God before we do anything that we call unto the Lord or do anything? Seek you first the kingdom of God. God said early, David said early will I seek you. Okay, so when you get up in the morning early, do you seek the Lord? Do you ask God to, 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 to lead you, to guide you in your day? God, I have these things planned that I want to do, but if you want me to change those things, God, I'm willing to change those things. See, you don't get that way with a nominal relationship with God. You get that way because you seek first his kingdom on a daily basis. You get that way because you love him so much that it's more important his will than my will. See, isn't that what Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane? He said, not my will, but thine will be done. That's right. Is what he said. See, and so... And so that's the whole thing. You know, honestly, as far as I can tell, there are very few people that really understand what it means to love God. See, and every time you say you love him and God knows that you're not living the way that that, that, that kind of love that you're talking about, the agape love of God, his kind of love, if you're not living that way, then God knows. And if you're not living that way, you're lying. You are lying to God. See, if the Bible says in Proverbs to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You see, the first part of that verse is going to get a lot of people because God says trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. And people will think because they believe that in their mind or they say that out loud with their mouth that, oh, I'm, I'm doing it. No, no, no. Trusting in the Lord with all of your heart requires an action. See, you can't just say, I'm trusting in the Lord with all my heart. Okay, give me some, give me some evidence. Okay, what did you do? See, and this is the thing. I thought about this the other day. We have more trust and more faith in, in unsaved people than we do in God. You say, well, what are you talking about? Okay, you get out here on the road and you're driving down the road or whatever. You don't even think twice that the person coming the other way, you never even think that they ain't going to stay on their side of the road. You believe they're going to stay on their side of the road or whatever. And you trust that. I don't think about it. When I'm driving, I don't believe, I don't be thinking, well, I, they, I, I, I better really, really pay attention because they, go, they might just come on over in my lane. No, you don't think like that. See, if you've never had an accident, especially, you ain't going to be thinking like that. You trust in those people. You believe that those people are going to stay on their side of the road or whatever. But God can tell you that a certain behavior will send you to hell and you just snub your nose and keep right on doing what you're doing. When God tells you that a new cre if you're a new creature in Christ, old things have passed away, all things have become new, and all things are of God, you don't believe that. Why? How do I know? Because you ain't living like that. See? That's how you know. Jesus said, for a reason, you're known by the fruit. See? So the thing is, is that, is that we trust unsaved people more than we trust God about a lot of things. It's so, about a lot of things. You just have to examine your own heart to figure out what it is in your life, you know, that you allow it to be that way. Um, so, <clears throat> when you're not being told the truth, then what happens is, we can go to Matthew, to Matthew 7 now, what happens is, you become whatever it is that you're being told. Because, see, you don't really, and see, and this is another thing. We trust men more than we trust God. You know, because, oh, he's a pastor. No, he ain't he gonna lie to us. He wouldn't tell us a lie. He wouldn't mislead us. Yeah, that's the same thing they said about that old pastor we had up there at, uh, at C3 or whatever the name of that church was. Came in and stole everything. 
sold it and stole it. Or stole it and sold it, I guess I should say. Good stuff. But in Matthew chapter 7, see, uh, Jesus warns us about these guys. In Matthew chapter 7, and we'll find in that same chapter the results of not heeding what Jesus tells us in verse 15. Go up to verse 13. Because I, I can't read, read this other stuff without reading it. Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, 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 many there be which go in thereat. Because, verse 14, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. See? They're not going to be all of these billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of people going to heaven like people think they are. Everybody is not going to heaven. Right. See? Everybody, even those, a lot of those people, when you went to those funerals and they put them all in heaven, all them people ain't going to heaven. That's right. They didn't go. They're not, well, didn't go, yeah. That's right. <laughs> didn't go to heaven and stuff. Why? Because your sin going to keep you out. That's right. You're not going to go to heaven just because somebody says you deserve to go. See? And the thing is, you deserve to go based on the false doctrine that they preach and the false doctrine that they teach. And if it's false, it's a lie straight from the pit of hell because it's not from God. God tells the truth. So in verse 15, the scripture said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Right. But a corrupt tree, or neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Listen to what Jesus says. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Now, I want you to listen, first of all, in verse 15. <laughs> listen to the warning from Jesus. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Mm -hmm. If you go over this to, uh, if you read, and you can read this on your own. You go over to Galatians chapter 1, and we find in Galatians chapter 1 that we had a false preacher, a false a uh, pastor, somebody come through Galatia and they preached another gospel. Right. Paul said they came and they preached another gospel. He says, but there is no other gospel. You know, he says, but they preached another gospel. And it was not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And the Bible says because of the fact that they preached another gospel, they were cursed. Mm -hmm. Now understand something. These guys would not have gotten to the hearts of people by preaching this false stuff if somebody would have stood up and said, that's a lie, that's not of God. Right. See, then none of that would have ever happened. Right. We don't have, like I said earlier, we ain't got no men around here hardly at all anymore that are willing to stand up for anything. See, they are allowing society <laughs> and demonic politicians to tell you that the woman is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. See? The woman is the head of the family. They're pushing this feminism stuff and they have pushed it so much that it is in the church. Right. See? It is in the church now. See? And everybody wants to be tolerant. Everybody wants to placate sin and hardly anybody wants to dunk on call what call out what it is. See? See, they, you know, preachers ain't going to tell you that, look, man, it ain't but two doggone genders, male and female, and God caused that to happen. See? Mm -hmm. And if God caused that to happen, he is the only creator, it can't be changed. Right. It can't be changed because that's what God did. Right. See? 
And what you find is, is that more and more in our society they're trying to change those things that are truly of God and make them become something man can say, I did this. Mm -hmm. I changed that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were able to get them to do this or whatever and stuff. You better be standing up for the truth. You better be standing up, believing the truth of God, and you better get that doggone jelly out your spine and get some steel rods put in there. That's right. See? That's right. Because if you keep sitting around here playing like you're stupid, which you are if you ain't doing nothing, see, and allowing people to think that God makes mistakes because he does not. Right. God didn't make a mistake when he said male and female. He didn't make no mistake. Right. God didn't make a mistake when he, when he created you to be exactly what he created you, male or female, to the point where no matter what man tries to do, they can't change that. Right. See? So that there's nothing that, because see, think about it. If man, think, if man believed that they could change the, the biology, the DNA, and all of that stuff of somebody in the life of somebody that was created by God, then the next thing that they want to do is think that anything that God created, we can do it better. Mm. See, that's what they think. Man is so full of themselves today and stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. God is not going to let them do that to his name. That's right. See, nor is he going to allow it to happen to his creation. And you're going to start, I told y'all this a few months ago, you're going to start seeing this stuff happen. It's already happening, but we just ain't see it yet because we got the fake news and ain't nobody going to tell you nothing. Right. See? So, so, but I'm telling you and stuff, they want to change the way God created everything so that they can get the credit for it. That's just how demonic these people are. You know, the root of all of this stuff that we got going on, the root of this doggone feminism and all of this stuff is sin. Right. We got sinful people that are screwed up, being used of the devil to try to make God as if he never existed mm. and that he didn't create the universe, didn't create the earth and stuff. See, that's a dangerous place to be, man. Right. See, because... You're going to find out that some of these people, once you go on and be with the Lord and stuff, you're going to find out a lot of these people that drop dead that God killed them. Because mm -hmm. he ain't putting up with that stupid stuff, man. And I'm telling you, see, what does the Bible say about things on the earth? They're temporal. They're temporal. But life, once you die, saved or unsaved, is eternal. Right. It's eternal. And God says you will reap what you sow. You will pay for the consequences of your sin. You will pay for blasphemy against God. See, crediting the devil with stuff, you know, and saying that, no, God didn't do this and God didn't do that. That's a fool right there. Mm -hmm. See, that's a fool. But Jesus said, said that you're known by the fruits and stuff. And I don't know why people, you know, run around here trying to call themselves saved when they're not. They can't even discern a doggone uh, pencil head, you know, as to whether it's red or green. They can't discern nothing. Why? You can't discern anything if you're not walking in the spirit. The Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Read that again. Not everybody that saith Unto me, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that, what? Doeth. Doeth. What did James say? Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Right. Doer of the word. Uh, doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Those are the people that's going to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. See, everybody claiming to be saved, they ain't saved. And they're not going to make it into heaven. 
If they said that Jesus was, oh, he is love, love, love. So if, if that was the kind of Jesus that we serve, then don't you think he would just let them in? Regardless, he would just let them in? He said, no, I never knew you. And I made this point several times. If Jesus, when you get to see Jesus face to face and you, and you would like this right here that, that, that I just talked about, if you would like that, and then you get to see him face to face and stuff, you ain't going to heaven. You're not going to, because see, the thing is, is that he didn't know you then, and he don't know you while you're on the earth. Why? Because you're not doing his will. You're practicing sin. You're practicing lawlessness, see? And everybody, when you talk about lawlessness and talk about sin, they think that you're out there committing adultery. They think that you're out there murdering people. They think you're out there just tearing stuff up. No, you can be a liar, man. And you can just say, oh, well, no, that ain't really a God. I don't believe that's a God and stuff like that. You know, you're deceiving people. See, that kind of stuff sends you to hell too. Think about it. Lying. If you are a liar, Jesus says you're going to hell. He says, ain't no question about it. Once God, once God, uh, once God declares something, it's not changing. That's right. It's written in stone. There are very few times God changes his mind. He changed his mind when Noah, when, uh, not Noah, when uh, um, Moses interceded on the behalf of the people because of all their rebellion and lawlessness. And Moses said, God, you can't kill them because these folks are going to talk about you like a dog. That you led these people out here in the wilderness just to kill them. See? He changed his mind that time. See? Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, he didn't change his mind on that, but he gave them a chance to intercede on their behalf. But it just didn't quite work out. And they all got burned up anyway. See? So we think that God won't do this stuff. But you know, but God ain't playing no games with people, man. He is not playing games. So Jesus said, you, there are going to be a lot of people who think that they're in right relationship with God and that they're going to make it into heaven. Jesus said, no, no, no. If you're not doing my Father's will, he says, you're not going to make it. The thing about these pastors and stuff, their whole problem, and I'll have to do this next week. I'm not going to, because I have so much stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk about how they were deceived, how them being deceived, and how they deceive other people because of their own deception. You know, and I mean, you know, and just like, you know, people can have a heart of God, heart for God, people can have a heart of deception as well. Because that's the only stuff that they'll let in because that's the only stuff that doesn't convict them of their sin and make them feel bad about their sin and stuff. See, so, so anyway, um, Let me close with this and we'll begin, we'll finish up on it next week. In 2 Timothy 3 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves, of self, of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, and that's the key, after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that's what we got. We've got a lot of ear ticklers in church in the pulpit nowadays and stuff. And that really doesn't serve the people well because, and, and really, you know, it's amazing how, you know, you talk to people and you can even point out, you know, the false doctrines and stuff. And they will, 
will treat you as that you are the devil himself. As opposed to understanding that what the way they believe and the way they're living, yeah, that's where it came from. It comes from the devil. So next week we'll uh, we'll indulge, you know, the last in the last days, and we'll talk about, um, you know, how the Bible says that Jesus is our example, whether we're pastors or or individual believers, and that we He's our example, and that we have to live and and get word from the Holy Spirit and follow His leading. Um, and we'll talk about that, and we'll we'll uh, we'll discuss some too. Uh, I preach rather too on uh, a little bit about deception because I think I need to hit that one more time because it seems as if it's like people get deceived and then they just kind of you know uh, get convicted rather they just kind of walk away from it after a period of time. So we'll look at that next week. So God bless you and uh, and Lord willing we will see you next week at eleven o'clock. Uh, to share the gospel of Christ and uh, next week we will be dealing with the pastors and their deceived hearts and stuff like that and so we love you guys and thank you so much for watching in Jesus name